Hello, and welcome to another American Photo Tricks post-processing video. I'm Dave Soldano, and uh, if you were with us last weekend at our horses workshop, you experienced probably some of the best conditions we have ever had. It was a load of fun, fresh snow, good light, good cowboys, lots of fun, good times there at the ranch. Thank you very much for coming. I hope you got a bunch of great photos. I hope my class on how to capture those photos was helpful. And now I'm going to do a short little video here with some tips and tricks on how to process these videos. I mean, how to process these um, pictures. Because they're, they're not easy to take and they're really not easy to process either. And you probably already experienced this. One of the most difficult things about these uh, photos is just picking which one to process. They're, uh, they're pretty challenging because uh, you know, if you were like me, you probably took you know, a thousand shots and uh, it was or, or more. And it's just hard to pick out which one to, uh, to, that you want to process and which one you want to take. So one of the things I'm always looking for is I'm looking to see all the horses' faces if I possibly can. And here's a good one right here where hopefully I can see everybody. I got what looks like uh, I can see all the horses' faces and I can see the cowboy's face and everything here. So this one might be a good one to process. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, this one here would also be good, but I think I've already looked at that. So let's do this one here. Let's just take a look, just, just for demonstration purposes. All right. And so I'm going to shut off this camera here just because it can be kind of a drain on resources. As you follow along with me, you'll notice this little thing pops up right here. And it shows you exactly what I'm clicking, I'm cl uh, what I'm doing with my mouse, what I'm doing with the keyboard, so you can follow along with me and hopefully that makes things easier. So you already know what I look like, so I'm just going to go ahead and shut this off. And then we'll get started post-processing this. And to start, I'm going to double-click the image. I'm working in Adobe Bridge, which I use as my library program. If you work in Lightroom, this is it's the exact same thing as Adobe uh, library uh, in Lightroom. And when I double click it, it opens up Adobe Camera Raw, which is the same as your uh, Lightroom Develop. So they're the same programs. You should be able to follow along with me pretty easily. So the first thing I see when I look at these images is white balance. Um, and actually before white balance, I'm going to take a quick look to make sure that I did my job and captured the image properly and everything's in nice good focus and mostly I'm going to be looking at the faces, the faces and eyes of the horses, cowboys and it looks like me and my camera did do our job everything looks like it's a nice sharp focus. So the next thing I want to look at is white balance and actually the camera did a pretty good job of white balance here I've seen a lot worse but it's still a little blue to my taste and what happens is just, you know, the snow reflects, it's just pure white, bright snow, so it reflects everything around it, and that's why you get kind of this overall blue. But a quick trick to fix that, if you come over here to your editing area and you see this little eyedropper, click on that eyedropper, and it's a white balance tool, and it'll tell you, go ahead and put that on a neutral color somewhere in the image, in this case snow is neutral, and it's going to use that as its basis to white balance. And you could see what it did. It just, it, it took away that blue color cast, made the snow white, white. And uh, it, it's really a good, uh, a real nice way to start with your white balance. I think it might have gone too far, though. I mean, it's taken out all the blue. Uh, so that that's not really realistic to me. It's kind of a cool uh, western feel to it, but I still think I need to add a little blue and I can come over here to my temperature control and move it just a little bit more this way just to make it look a little bit more natural. And I think that looks good there. That's a good place to start. Now I want to process and I turn on these uh, indicators here that tell me if I have an area that's too black and doesn't have any detail, or if I have an area that's too white blown out and doesn't have any detail. And I'm going to start just by clicking the auto editor, which is going to even everything out. 
But as it does, it does it did its best here, but you can see my blacks right there got too deep a shadow and I can just move up my blacks until I get rid of that little alarm. And uh, for some reason, it always seems to add some vibrance and saturation when I click the auto. And I think it, I don't think it needed it. So I'm going to go back down to zero on my vibrance and zero on my saturation because those look like pretty realistic colors, except for this horse right here. He looks a little too washed out, but I can fix him in other ways. So I, I think we've done a pretty good job of just you know, evening things out here. See, my highlights are down, but not too much. My shadows could probably come up just a little bit more, I think. My whites look good. If you can see uh, texture and detail in the snow, that's nice. I like that. Now, I could um, crop this here in my Adobe Camera Raw program, but I kind of like the crop in uh, Microsoft or uh, excuse me, Photoshop a little better. It's a little easier for me to use. So I think I'm gonna go there for the, my next round of edits. And to do that, all I do is click open. It closes Adobe Camera Raw and opens Photoshop. So now I'm in Photoshop. And the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna crop. And I think I want a 16 by nine crop. It just, uh, that's just a handy crop. This cowgirl back here, she's really not part of the picture. She's kind of static, sitting straight up and down. Doesn't really go with the rest of the picture. So I think I'm going to crop her out. And then I'm going to bring in, and I'm going to leave a little bit of my picture on the right-hand side because the horses are primarily moving from left to right. So if I leave just a little bit on my right, it kind of gives them somewhere to run. And that's a, a good general rule for any time you're photographing anything that's moving is leave a little bit in the picture in the direction that it's moving. So that, and also I think maybe my level was just a little bit off. So I'm gonna turn it to straighten everybody up. That looks pretty good. Maybe bring them down a little bit more. There we go. So it looks more like a seam there. Yeah, that's pretty good kind of like some of those clouds up there, but if they're not really adding to the story I'm trying to tell, I don't need too many of them. So that, that looks good to me. I'll leave that and maybe get rid of it another way. Go. Then layer. I'm going to flatten that and make it so we can see it. And yeah, I like that. That looks kind of cool. It's got some action. I love the snow being kicked up there. I kind of like the position all the horse's legs are in. I can see this cowboy's face. I can see that's horse's face. Not too bad at all. But we've still got some shadows to deal with and we're not really separated that well. And uh, to deal with that, I'm going to use a program that's, I mean, uh, a feature that's been added to Adobe Photoshop fairly recent, which recently, which is just select subject. And this doesn't always work well, but when you've got a scene like this, something tells me it's going to work really good. And it did. Because um, you've got this background that's very different from the foreground. So it's really pretty easy for it to do its job and just, um, you know, select just the subject, which in this case is the horses and the cowboy. So I'm going to put on my selection tool here and there we go and just tighten it up just a little bit I don't need to too much because of the type of uh, adjustments I'm gonna make but then I'm gonna go into my selection and right click and choose layer via copy so what it's done now is made a layer of just the area that I've selected I'm gonna turn off the background come up here to filter and go to camera raw filter and so now I'm going to work in camera raw, the way camera raw filter, but only affecting the horses and the cowboy. I'm not going to do too much here because you can see there's little parts of the background that are still there and that type of thing. But I do want to add some clarity, which is nice because see how that adds a little bit, add a little texture. That looks good. And now I can work just on the shadows of the horses and bring that up. That looks good. And now I can add a little vibrance, but bring down 
the saturation. So I've got vibrance, but I don't have unnatural looking. And this horse is a problem, right? He's really dark compared to everything else. Let's see if the bringing up the blacks helps bring him out a little bit. It does seem to, but I don't know if that vibrance was that great an idea. So I'm bringing up those shadows. Kind of, there we go. I want everybody to look natural. There we go. So now we'll hit OK. Go back into our picture. By turning this off and on now, you can see what we did. We brightened up those horses. Doesn't that look better now? They're really kind of popping. And we can see into their eyes. We can see there. That looks pretty darn good. I like that. Good. You can see their face. can see his eye, his eye, his eye. Yeah, I like that layer. Flatten. I'm going to get rid just by using my um, spot healing brush and get rid of this cowboy's boot over here that I don't need in my picture. There we go. All right, so what do we need to work on now? Uh, this is a little dark right here, and he doesn't look really natural. He looks a little washed out. So now I'm going to work with a program that I like really, really well. It's part of the Nick Collection series. It's called Vivesa 3. And Vivesa lets me put control points in my picture uh, that it's, and it's, it's very much like luminosity masks. And I'll show you. For example, this horse right here, he looks a little washed out to me. So I'm going to put a control point on him right about here. And now I'm going to turn on the mask so it'll show me what I'm affecting. And that's good because that's it's just affect the white is what it's going to be affecting. And we can see it's going to be affecting that re, the whitest part, which is exactly what I want to do. So now I'm just going to bring down the brightness of this horse just a little bit. And I'm going to add some contrast because he kind of got, for some reason, washed out and some structure. There we go. Now he's starting to look normal. And... There we go. And he was a little, for some reason, kind of had a little, uh, what do you call that? Uh, he was a little saturated. But now he looks really good. He looks like uh, looks like he did in real life. So that's good. Now this really dark area right here, we want to address that as well. So we'll put a control point here. There we go. Because your eyes kind of go right to that. And so now again, I'm going to check my mask. Yep, that's exactly what I want to affect right there. I'm just going to bring up the brightness a little. There we go. Yeah, that's not bad. And I'm maybe the shadow. I don't want to go too far with this because I, he's a black horse, so he should look black. That looks good to me. There we go. So now he's he's not quite that you know super dark. And then right here, I would say maybe just a tad right here, we could lighten up just to make his eye pop a little bit more. There it is. We're just going to bring that shadow out just a little bit. There we go. And when you hit apply, it automatically creates another layer. And you can see what it did. See? Watch this horse right here. As I turn that off, he was all washed out. Now he's got now he's got some detail, looks normal. And he's not quite as blown out. We got nice eyes right here. This looks good. I like this a lot. So one more thing I think I want to do just to really make this picture pop. And I'm going to add, I'm going to get a duplicate layer here just to emphasize this. There we go. And first thing it, I'm going to do is I'm going to add a vignette right around here, and this is going to be a freehand vignette. Of course, the way these horses are, really we didn't have to be, but I just want to demonstrate. These are T Tony Kuiper Actions TK, and this is TK7. And it's got um, a combo pack here that has these specific actions, and one of them is freehand vignette. So I can hit that, go here, 
and you can control this. You can, you know, paint where you don't want it. And look what it did. It just added some nice depth to that picture, didn't it? Isn't that cool? I mean, it really made it pop. And of course, I can put, I can, since it's a layer, I can, you know, choose to go with more with it. I can paint stuff away. It just works, you know, it's just really, really good. Well, now I'm going to stamp up, which just basically just means I'm going to keep all my layers, but I'm going to add one on top that has all the adjustments I've made to it so far. And I'm going to do one more adjustment with those Tony Kuiper actions. I am going to just highlight my horse's faces right here and the cowboy's face. I'm going to draw a line around it just like that. In fact, I think I'm going to be even fancier with it. Come down here, then I'm going to go low. And I'm just going to really just highlight my horse's faces here. And you're like, what are you doing, Dave? And I'm going to show you. Because I'm going to again go to Tony Kuiper's Actions, come right here, and this time I'm going to hit Spotlight. Okay? And now kind of check, as I turn this layer off and on, see what it's done. It's just highlighted their eyes and their faces. Isn't that neat? I've just added another level of depth to the picture. So isn't that, isn't that sharp? All right, and then, you know, we can go on and on and on and all these things we can do, but I just wanted to show you a few tips and tricks to kind of get you started here. Here's an idea kind of where we started, where we ended. Nice depth, has, a, has good depth to it. You can really see the horses, has movement. I like it, I like it a lot. I hope you guys did too. I hope you found this interesting and you know you can play with it more and more. I've seen you guys already sharing post, uh, pictures on social media uh, and I've, a lot of you guys have uh, tagged the ranch and tagged American Photo Treks and I really appreciate that. The easiest way to tag American Photo Treks is you just put the at sign, start typing American Photo Treks and then pretty soon a drop dial will come up and you can pick us and we love that. I love to see your images. Thank you again for coming to the workshop. We had a great time. Really enjoyed meeting all, you, uh, all the new people and really enjoyed seeing all the return people back. Just a great time. Fun, fun, fun time. And I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. So hope to see you on our next workshop. Bye-bye.